So today, break is going to be very brief as we have special guest presenters with us. Um, quick note from myself, please, please, please check your email. There was a really exciting event opportunity that came out for me earlier in the week, tomorrow, here at 12 p.m., and I'd love to have you all present. Um, now we're going to pass it over to Maria for yearbook. Yeah, yeah Maria! So as we start the new school year, we're all just waiting for one thing, the last day of school. But not because we don't like our classes. We love our classes. We're sad they're going to be over. But we get our yearbooks. So um, we really need help this school year. We don't really have a lot of sign-ups. Um, so far, there's just me and two other people. And it can be really, really fun and interactive. But it's not as fun when it all goes down to one or two people because then it just becomes stressful. So please join us. We need photographers. We need editors. We need people that have design ideas, people who are interested in submitting student art. Anything helps. So if you're interested, we will be at Club Fairway. You can talk to me and we'll get you going. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. So before we introduce our, our guests, um, for those of you that are returning students, you know that this is our annual Ford, Ford, Ford Ordinance Training, or, or we like to call it our, our bomb talk. So we'll have the bomb talk in a, in a little while. Um, but I wanted to provide a little historical context. Um, I'm not sure we've done this before, at least since I've been here, we haven't done this to give us an understanding of why do they come every year and give us the bomb talk. Um, so, the screen. So there's a greeting card from Fort Ord in the 1940s. So what was Fort Ord originally? Does anybody know? Scout. A military base. It was, it was, a, it was a military base. It was an army base and it actually started in 1917. What war in 1917? Yes. World War I. World War One. Good. Thank you for knowing that. So World War One. So the government actually came out to Monterey because the weather is beautiful, and it was a great place to have training exercises. So it started in 1917, and then in 1914, Fort Ord became an official army base. And from 1917 until 1994, when it officially closed. That's what its um, purpose was. There's some other pictures for you. So you've probably been to Marina and you've seen all of the um, former barracks that um, are not in good shape anymore. Many of them getting torn down now. Um, many of them still exist. Here is when they were actually in pristine condition. This was 1950. So Fort Ord um, was the home for thousands and thousands and thousands of um, our military personnel. Um, they lived in these barracks um, on Fort Ord, um, and Fort Ord was about 28,000 acres, and I'll show you a map here in a second. But again, the primary purpose of, of the Army base was for infantry training. So you can see here, this is probably about the 1930s, late 1930s, 1940s. They're doing anti-tank um, exercises out somewhere in what used to be the Fort Ord military base, and now is the Fort Ord National Monument. Here's my favorite photo. Probably late 50s, early 60s. So again, this is one of the reasons why we have the bomb talk. Here they are detonating, um, taking some practice, detonating some ordnance out, uh, out in Fort Ord. Here's an aerial photograph sometime in the mid-century, mid mid-20th century of Fort Ord. And here's a map. So all of that tan space is what Fort Ord used to contain. So that 28,600 acres to be precise. So see that little red dot? There's a green arrow now pointing to the red dot. That's us at York School. We're right on the edge of, of um, what used to be Fort Ord. So when the base closed in 1994, um, the federal government working with the local authorities wanted to figure out what to do with all of that land. And so you see Fort Ord National Monument that 
that many of you have likely been to. Um, but we had an opportunity as a school, thanks to the trustees at the time and the heads of school in the 90s, to actually acquire 101 acres across the road that used to be part of that Fort Ward military base. Um, and so this is what it is now. You can see the school and I'm trying to have little red outlines there. That's the 101 acres that we acquired um, from the Fort Ward military base back in sort of the late 90s, officially became our property in 2011. So today, our guests are gonna talk about why we need to be um, aware of all of these former ordinances found, found on property, because we actually own part of that property. Um, and then soon, 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 we are going to take everybody, faculty, staff, so there's you know 54 new students, 11 new faculty. Um, we're gonna take everybody out to the 100 acres so you can check it out and see, see for yourself um, why it's such a special place. So anyway, so a little historical context. So, Mr. Brickhouse, you want to introduce our guests? Woo! All right, so we do a, a lot of uh, safety training here at York, and uh, there are a couple safety like concerns that I have that I think are of higher possibility than others. Uh, the, the first one is earthquakes. I think I think there's like a legitimate chance that we're gonna face an earthquake in the next couple of years. Um, not any greater than the past, but we live in an earthquake zone, so it's really a high probability that's going to happen. Anyone remember the three things you do in the event of an earthquake? No. Okay, we're going to have to go over that. Yeah, Mr. Peters. No, 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 earthquake. Earthquake. Although it's good to recognize, but uh, you're going to recognize it because the ground's going to be shaking, um, I would think. But uh, drop, cover, hold on. So you drop, you get to the ground, you cover yourself with something like a desk or a table, if you can, and hang on. And then once the, uh, once the shaking stops, then we can reunify. Um, and then the other one is, is uh, and I can, I can uh, tell you this from personal experience, is the uh, unexploded ordinance that, that is probably out there in that area. Um, I want to, uh, to welcome our guests from the Army Corps of Engineers, an organization called RAC, um, Val and Hudson. Good morning, everyone. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. So many bright, beautiful faces. Thanks, for everyone, for being here today. Again, yeah, my get a little closer to the mic. It'll... Now can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, once again, my name is Hudson, and this is Val. We work for the um, Army Ford Ord Environmental Cleanup, uh, also known as the BRAC Office, which stands for Base Realignment and Closure. Uh, my specific task is I am the Munitions Response Site Security Manager, and Val here is the MEC Field Manager or Tech Support, correct? <laughs> For those who don't know what MEC means, that's Munitions and Explosives of Concern, which is why we're here talking to you today. Um, as stated before, there is a certain portion of York School that is of the former Ford Ord. And with that, we want to make sure that today we communicate with you what to do in any situation that you run into um, a munition in the ground, let alone um, some of the possibilities that are out there and, and almost like a history lesson. I know I've learned a lot through this process and hope you get to learn some today as well. Um, just to start out and get a perspective, it sounds like some of you have had this training before or kind of know of this training. Let's see you raise a hand. Who here has been through this training or, or is aware of Fort Ord, so to speak? That's a pretty good amount, but I also see a lot of hands that are down still. So make sure that you get all the questions you need asked or answered today so that we know for future reference what to do in any type of situation out there. Um, so, um, who here was aware before they took this training that Fort Ord was an old military base? A lot of you, cool. And with that, um, who knows what to do if you were to run into anything you see on this board here today? 
there's a lot less hands than I just saw a minute ago. And that's what we're here today to do. We want to make sure that you are aware of what to do in those situations and also to be confident in how you perform those um, situations. Um, as said, stated before, the Ford Ord was here from 1917 to 1994. That's when it closed. And from there, um, they used and practiced all sorts of new munitions out here in this area. And here on the bomb board, you see some small samples of what could be out there still. And there, um, the Ford Ord is a very large location, so there's a possibility that it can be anywhere in the ground and we want you to know the steps on how to report that accurately for your own safety as well as others. Um, your training field, the athletic field, as you said, is a part of Fort Ord. They used to do a lot of different, correct me if I'm wrong, Val, but field ranges, correct? Right. Yeah, they used a lot, a lot of that area for specific training for rifles and such, and with that, I understand that your cross country team also uses a section of that area along South Boundary Road. That too was an area where they performed a lot of different sorts of training. We want you to know that this area has been cleaned up by, by the Army, so everything is safe on that note. But we also want you to be aware and to be cautious of anything that you could find. Truth is, um, you know, you dig something up in the ground in the backyard, how long do you think that was there? It could be five years, 10 years, could be 50 years for all we know. So we want you to be cautious when it comes to certain regions of your campus, specifically that one, in terms of notifying and registering that there could be a possible munition in the ground. Everyone good so far? Yeah? Still head nods, thank you. <laughs> um, so let's talk about what to do in the situation if you were to, let's say, go on a hike. Let's say you're walking along Fort Ord or walking more specifically by those athletic fields and you see something shiny in the ground, don't really know what it is. We want to handle this properly and safely. Therefore, we practice what we call the three R's. Everybody lift the three up. Yep, three R's. Let's count it off with me. One, you recognize. Two, you retreat. Three, you report. So let's think about that a little bit. If you're on your hike with your family, you see something shiny in the ground, what's the first step? Recognize. Recognize, Recognize there's something in the ground. I don't know what it is. It looks cool, but what's step number two of this process? Retreat. Retreat, Retreat means step away from the item. The truth is, is if anyone knows, it's Val, that some of these items over time can decay and with that can, I guess, make certain aspects of the munition susceptible um, to, to the elements. And with that, we don't want to trigger any of these munitions at any, you know, am I saying that right, trigger? <laughs> we don't want to trigger anything that we should, don't want to be triggered. Um, step number three is to report. And therefore, once we recognize, we step away, we know we gotta let someone know, not only for your safety, but others as well in the future. And how we report that is as simple as calling 911. Anywhere in Fort Ord, anywhere here in Monterey County, um, if you were to find a possible munition, I understand that you see it, you don't know if it's a munition or not, therefore, if even if you're hesitant in any manner, call 911 immediately. We then know, you know, I guess at that point, we'll send the right jurisdiction and the right people, professionals at that, to take care of the munition properly and safely so that everyone is, um, you know, safe in Fort Ord. We don't want anyone to get hurt. Um, and with that, following these three steps is the easiest way not only to handle the situation, but to save yourself as well as others around you. Good so far? Um, truth is, they can be found in a lot of unexpected places, which is why we want you to you know, keep your head on a swivel, be aware of the situation. Um, some of your own staff members have found munitions in the local area. I believe a Miss Keese. Is that you, Miss Keese? Nice to meet you. <laughs> Ms. Keast has successfully followed the three R's and reported munitions. We also have Mr. Brokhauser over here. 
He showed me a photo earlier of a munition he found and reported following the three R's. And I believe that was in, yeah, the trail areas, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but from there, I, even the cleaned up trails, possible munitions have been found and reported. So we want everyone to be aware of that. So next time you're out there, you know, whether you're running on the trail, riding your bike, or simply taking a hike, we want you to be aware that these munitions can still be in the ground. And we want you to follow the three R's moving forward if you were to find any possible munition in the ground. Um, luckily for you, we make it fairly easy to notify you where <laughs> these locations are. If you look on my left here, your right, you see a series of signs underneath the bomb board. These signs are all lined along a barbed wire fence of, on the complete perimeter of the impact area that we have restricted and closed off. Trespassing on federal land is illegal, but not only that, it is very dangerous in this area for the possibility of munitions, as I've stated before. So with that, if you see a fence line with those signs, please, please, for your own safety, follow those signs, stay out of that area, and stay on the designated trails. Another fun fact, and I bet you someone can tell me why, we don't allow um, metal detecting in Fort Ord. Who would have thought, right? <laughs> there are possibilities of finding stuff in the ground. We don't want anyone digging it up or touching it for your own safety, which is why we don't allow metal detecting either in these locations. Anything to add, Alex, so far? Sometimes um, to clean certain areas, um, you know, we are ongoing in certain areas of Fort Ord in terms of cleanup. Um, part of that is sometimes removing vegetation and we do prescribe burns through the Army to clear vegetations for further cleanup. Just know that in 2022, we have no prescribed burns planned and, um, and yeah, no burns prescribed in 2022. Um, any questions so far before we move on? No? All right. With that, we hope you take this very seriously because we do as well and we want everyone to not only be safe but to have a good time in Port Ord. Um, there's a lot of history in this area. It's a beautiful piece of land and there's a lot of great views and we want everyone to enjoy it safely. In order to do that, we hope you took something out today and knowing that if you were to be at Fort Ord and find any possible munition in the ground, it could look like a paint can, it could look like a car muffler, really anything in the ground can be designated as munition. And we want you to be safe moving forward, follow the three R's. Doing that will let us do our job successfully and also for your own safety. Um, thank you so much for having us. Um, if you want to learn more about what we do and how we do it, our website is really um, intuitive and has a lot of great information. It's as simple as fortorcleanup.com, and I highly suggest you go review that if you have the chance. We also perform military munitions um, safety training, and that could be in person or online. Um, you can communicate through me on that matter if you'd like to join in on that, but we do offer it for anyone who, who wants to do so. And presentations like this, be happy to do with fellow family, friends, classes, whatever the sort may be. If anyone is interested, please feel free to uh, reach out to me afterwards and I'd be happy to set that up for you. Other than that, um, I do have some small pieces of gear, so to speak, and small little tokens for answering some questions. Um, again, I hope you all learned something here today, but a few questions I had um, for some gear. Find that for you. And some of them are pretty easy because it wasn't a very long presentation, let alone it's all right here in front of you. <laughs> Can someone tell me what the three R's are without looking at the board? <laughs> Got this gentleman in red here. You look at the board, I saw your eyes. <laughs> when, uh, when we're done here, you come on up, okay? We'll give you some gear, okay? <laughs> if you were to find a possible munition in the ground, who do we call immediately? 
and it's not the Ghostbusters. Nine one one, very good. Yeah. Okay, congratulations, listening. Yes, uh, here's a trick question. When did Fort Ord military base close? Oh, a lot of people know this one right here. Nineteen seventy four. What was that? Nineteen seventy four. Ooh, it's close. Unfortunately, wrong. <laughs> right here. Yep. 94, very good. You earned yourself some stuff. <laughs> Another trick question for you. Let's all look at the bomb board you see here of some examples you may find in the ground. Which one do you think is the most dangerous? <laughs> right here, Miss. They all have holes cut in the tube. That's the answer I was looking for. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, again, thank you everyone for having us. We hope you learned something today, let alone um, you understand some of the history of the local area that you're in. I mean, we are your neighbors. We are right across the way. I could toss a stone to where I usually drive around to, <laughs> to check things out. So with that, um, thank you so much for having us. Thank you for listening. And with that, be safe out there on the four doors. We appreciate your time. Thank you, Hudson. Thank you, Val. Um, I want to reiterate uh, first three R's. Good. But I also want to say that that this land out here that we have, uh, that that York owns, and also the four door, uh, the the monument out there, it's safe to use, right? Yes. Yeah. Good. I mean, it's safe to go out there. It's a great resource. By the way, since I get this opportunity, let me plug the mountain bike group. Um, if any of you really want to explore that territory, you're gonna see more Fort Ord than any other group out there. Please join us for mountain biking. Um, but thank you so much, uh, Val and Hudson, for uh, sharing your safety talk with us. And uh, now I'll hand it over to Nico. Yeah. Happy Friday, everyone. Um, just a quick note for our students and faculty alike, if you have an announcement you'd like to make during break, please submit an announcement or re request on b.yrk.link two cycle days before. But then other than that, I don't really have much to say, so let's just get out of here and scram. Yeah. <laughs>